So <laughs> let me yeah. before we start. Really, really, really. <laughs> I'm gonna go refresh my tea, so I'll be back in a second. All right, that sounds right. good. I'm gonna pause that way everyone doesn't have to wait for Quentin to refresh his tea. Start back. And I left my tea in the other room. Sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's refresh All now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll leave you guys to it. I gotta do some some prep. Yeah. Thanks, David. All right. So, Bryce, you were gonna. Um, yeah. Sorry, I had to. I switched because all of my PDF stuff is on the laptop, so I can share screen. Um. So, like, I went through and like ended up um, like editing most of, um, yeah, like actually like editing editing the PDF yesterday and adding all of the um sections and whatnot. Um. One of the small things was, so yeah. So I guess like one of the small things is like I know there's a there's like this section for appeal appeals court docket number, um, which is like one of those court use only forms or part, parts of the form. But it does start off with like a little p in the middle. Like I don't know what this. I guess is just indicating that like it shouldn't be filled in. But I don't know if that would get in the way of whatever the appeals court does with it. That's a great question. So I actually do not think this is a court use only field at all Um, because they told us remember in our meeting last week they said you would use this with the um, motion to enlarge time so that would be an existing court case so it would already have a docket number you're right you're right okay so I think just edit the pdf to to delete that dash p and then add the docket number as a field there gotcha um I guess I actually use the second question because you're right. I didn't think about the fact that this would be like a docket number that the person has. The second question is, do we have, was there, was there a special variable for like, is, was docket number a special variable or not? Because there are in this case, maybe this is like just one of the, I know we haven't done a too, too many appeals court cases, but like um, there is specifically multiple docket numbers. Um, Okay, yeah, let's take a look and see if we can figure I'm it out. trying to find where the other one is because, yeah, yeah, because there's the both, the yeah, there's both the lower court docket number of the case that you're appealing and there's now the new case in the appeals court docket number. Um, I would so, use unique variables for those. So I wouldn't use court name. I would use like trial court. I should have caught that, sorry, during the review. Um, okay. And then I would use like trial court docket or trial court docket number maybe. Gotcha, okay. For A and B there. And then at the top, use docket number there because that's the docket number that is being filed as part of. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Um, cool. And then, okay, so that's that's the thing. Um, what were the other questions I had? I guess one of them was like I think Quinn and I sort of chatted over like the GitHub GitHub issues, but. Um, was whether or not like check boxes or like radio buttons are the proper, um, are like the proper tool for answer questions like this. Was this or any information impounded? Yes or no. Like it doesn't, like at least it didn't seem to make sense that like you could have a checkbox where you can technically check both, but at the same time, just none of our stuff seemed to, or like the, um, like Doc Assemble itself didn't really seem to recognize like radio buttons as things. Um, Yes, but I know, I don't know if that was just a common thing that we just sort of know about and we just use checkboxes or if it was something we don't run into that much. I don't know. Oh, I had I this dream about groups in PDFs, but... You had a dream sorry. about no, I ha- no, I have a dream. I have a dream that I want to make a reality about, but I'm sorry. No, this is not the time. Go ahead. No, it's- it's real. It's really what Bryce is asking, I think, right? Like, should we be handling radio buttons? So it's yeah, because I, I almost like I almost went down a rabbit hole of like, how hard would it be to just add getting groups to the like to whatever to like our like wizard setup, um, which it seemed to, I, I got a little lost at by the PDF miner. Um, but yeah, no, like, is is it is it like a worthwhile thing that I could like spend two days on and boom, we have radio buttons now. So we could do it fairly easily if we add to the name, but adding to the naming convention then complicates that. Um, 
my dream was a more UI based solution because I think it's more clear for people, but that is really a far off dream that's like, um, but there could also be a question where in the wizard where you could say these are part of a group, like you can say, you know, these all belong to the same variable. So th I think those are three options. You know, um, all of them add complexity, but if we're seeing that people are not having trouble with that complex with the com the current complexity, maybe it's worth pushing it a little bit and seeing if uh, people can take a little bit more. I don't know. What have people been noticing? Yeah, I'm not often with people. That's why actually it's kind of exciting to get a review from somebody who's just starting to do the labeling and being able to have that be a Teaching Tuesday thing because then we can see what people's thought processes are when they're going through it. It may be if, if for school, I mean now because you're teachers, right? If part of an assignment for using the wizard was to videotape yourself using the wizard with Zoom, I mean, is that an appropriate assignment? Because that could be really telling, like as opposed to just feedback, yeah. Maybe, it might be. It's hard to get people to do things early. Some people are really excited and will do it. Well, just when they do it, they can record it. I don't know. All right, whatever. But it's a thought. It can be on the back burner. Yeah, I mean, and part of it is, of course, right? Like form design for use on paper is different from form design to be used uh, um, in an interview. Digitally. So like a lot of the places where we use radio buttons, if we feel like, okay, we can edit the form, we would just put the word yes, no, or whatever the choice is. We wouldn't show all the options and just highlight one. Um, but people are used to seeing the form a certain way. So I don't, I'm not saying we should go ahead and change the forms, but it, it is kind of funny. We're working through a convention to support a bad user experience on paper that was limited for what the options were you can do with paper. <laughs> Well, so there's a question of like having a yes, no checkbox, right? And then there's a question of like making groups. Like I think we could talk about the naming conventions for yes, no, and whether they should be used and, and how and how they it's should Fundamentally be. about the limits of paper to me, right? Because anytime you have multiple things, you, you're making someone choose from among those. It's not a natural thing to read or to write you're just trying to make it easy for them to choose correctly on paper. Right. But you're limiting, it's a limited experience compared to what you have flexibility with if it's a dynamic form that you can fill in any piece of information. Like here we have hand delivery, first class mail, email. There's no reason for those to be check boxes except that you're trying to help the person fill it out on paper. It's not helpful for the person who reads the form. I guess I was thinking of when we like as we're thinking of the process of converting it, right? As we're thinking of the process that the wizard does um, and whether we base that on the name. I, I, so what I've noticed in my observations of people making these labels um, is that the naming conventions is already a fairly big barrier. Like a lot of confusion happens around the naming conventions and a lot of mistakes happen there um, whereas the wizard, like the interactions with the wizard, the, the actual interview itself are more consistent. Um, I may be wrong about that because I have not gotten to observe that all, as much as the other. Um, but that's where my hesitation for like putting this functionality into naming conventions like that's, that's where I'm a bit cautious. It may be that improving the documentation, which is also a thing that's on the to-do list, like would, would handle a lot of that. But um, I, don't, I think there are, we, yeah, I don't know. I, that's, I have presented there. Don't you, don't, you, don't you lawyers have a thing that's like, I have presented or something? I thought there was a, a sentence you say to the judge or something that goes, or to someone that goes, and I have presented, no? I rest my case. I must have been in a movie. I rest my case, that's what you mean. Okay. What? David got there. I, I rest, rest my case. I rest my case. Okay, I rest my case. I don't feel like that's the what I'm intending to imply, but okay. 
but but I think that's the closest the closest that's probably what I was thinking of David I can't think of another thing that's like it but once David said it that made it made sense to me that that's where you were going probably um yeah I mean so your question though Bryce was like how do we handle checkboxes and the answer is right now we right. make them each single variables that you handle mm -hmm. and I had kind of had this idea of we would automatically handle yes no um named things we never did that but that's a really easy thing for us to add we could easily handle that in the um, attachment block where it would fill in yes or no appropriately depending on yeah. it would handle the inverting of the options and that actually would probably help a lot of people with those yes no check boxes because People Those are a bit confusing. Negating a Boolean variable. That's that's a, a big concept to like for people who are not really teaching programming concepts. We're just having <laughs> to use them without ever learning them. Yeah. There's one thing that I've noticed that um, when people are presented with instead of yes, no on a PDF, uh, but instead in, uh, presented with just a text box that, um, I mean, a checkbox for an item. So it's basically a you know yes no in doc assemble the same thing as a yes no in doc assemble they usually write yes next to it like or sometimes yes no next to it um which i understand why they do that but we don't have a like if the either either you know we think about that as a convention but um and that might be an easy convention to get people to adopt yeah, I, I mean, sorry, this is addressing a slightly different, I, I, like, I like the idea of, of supporting yes, no, turning into, you know, handling that for the developer. That sounds awesome. And I'm sorry, I was moving on to a different topic, um, which was handling just checkboxes and or that confusion. No, I mean, that feels like something we should just do. It should be pretty easy for us to do too. And then we can, because your your thought, Bryce, is like let's enforce correctness at the PDF level, but I think so. Yeah, but yeah, but specifically, my thought was like getting getting this PDF from the appeals court. There are actually like quite a few fields that just didn't exist, even in like their downloadable one. Like nature of the case was not like a thing you could like fill in in the fillable PDF, and so I like like was debating this thought of like oh we should like tell them to update this PDF because even people who aren't using us and are going straight to like their their online portal and downloading that form won't be able to actually fill out the entire form because entire sections like the like these first like four and five were completely just like not fill inable on a PDF without having to print them out and scan it back in. Um, really? Why is that? That's great. Were they drop downs that maybe just weren't compatible in your PDF reader? They may maybe um, did it have some drop downs, but. Maybe that's actually a good point. I, I'll you have might, to go back and check. I, it was one of those, because that was the, the one I had downloaded directly was the one that I had like opened up and wasn't able to edit in Acrobat because of the life You cycle. might want to try and open it up online. Like in, you might try Chrome and Firefox and see if one of those gives you some clues because each of those renders PDFs differently. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, yeah. Um, oh, I should, you're right. I probably should do some significant testing. Um, but, yeah, yeah, but either way, I just saw that and I was like, well, like, we should be able to like give it back, which maybe was thinking like, yeah, like just using the PDF outside of us being able to enforce correctness within the interview. Like I wanted to make sure that like it made sense for that if we did and then, um, but yeah, and then checkboxes just didn't seem like a, the really the tool that could enforce that out on, on the PDF outside of outside of our stuff. Um, I think like I totally under, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, but I, I, one perspective that I come to it with is thinking like, as far as the more constrained we make the PDF, the more room we give people to make errors and how they add, add those constraints. Whereas if we make it more open for how it comes into DocAssemble, there's more you can fix in just the YAML. It doesn't require people to use a PDF editor. So it cuts both ways a bit, but I do think people do tend to make mistakes with, with the, the PDF fields already. There, I mean, there is a kind of middle point at which Sorry, there, there is a middle point at which we could kind of insert a place to, to you know, control those kinds of things, which is the wizard, right? Because we've got the like 
PDF conventions if instead we provide some tools like the you know persons thing that's that's being developed and stuff um, add some more tools to the wizard that could also generate a more useful PDF I mean like you've just said with the uh, in, instead of using the names if we let people describe those in the wizard it's something if you want to you know we can sit down and think about or you know how that interaction would go you're talking about like names of people as the analogy but what's the part but we don't edit pdfs in the wizard right now but are you thinking like talking to document about it that would be awesome but i think that's a bit out of scope for that's not that's not the scope that i was describing so as opposed to basing there's a lot of things we could add naming conventions for, like we could make yes, no, a very special thing. We could also have a, you know, a part in the wizard where you go select a group, right? And so you select the items in the group and here it would be, is first something or other yes and is first something or other no or whatever they call it. And they could say, this should be a radio group, right? This should be a yes, no radio group. This should be a set of choices. This should be, you know, um, in order to let people uh, control that in, in a more explicit way, instead of through labels, instead of through the text that they put in the, in the labels. Okay, so you don't mean editing the PDF, you just mean like giving them the, yeah. the, meaning that the wizard assigns them doing that. Yeah, I, I think, think the only one we do that with right now is, and we don't actually do it, are yes, no variables. Mm -hmm. um, and you're saying, yeah, as you're pointing out, we're planning to do that flexibility for people, but it still requires you to use the naming convention for the people. Well, yeah, I mean, it, this is more permissive than the naming convention, I think, that, than, the, than the people one, you're right. I mean, it would be as if we presented them, you know, kind of the whole list of variables and said, check off which one of these are people, right? Um, so that, you're right, that this is more permissive and it lets them go, this is a group, you know, this is a group. And so it's more permissive than, you know, keeping it to, specific naming conventions. It's an interesting idea. I mean, I do think we have to keep in mind, like it's not too unusual to have like a, page, a PDF that's a couple pages that has 150 variables because of the way PDFs okay. work. Actually, uh, Bryce, I don't know if you know how many fields are on this PDF. That looks like- Yeah, I don't remember. Do I have it? Let me see if I have it pulled up still in, um, how do you move the, I'm gonna stop trying because I just can't see anything. Um, Oh, okay, no, I don't have it pulled up. I, yeah, I was gonna say I, I, I still had for a while the same, um, this the same thing pulled up, um, in like after having gone through the little PDF part of the wizard. Uh, yeah. I don't think it gives me a count, but it's like there are a decent number of variables. Most of them are the checkbox ones, um, or at least like a good half. It's thirty-ish, um, maybe. I think. I think. That make I mean it, it's that's right that like you're you're deciding where to put that work whether you're putting it up front or whether you're putting it later um, like whether you're putting it in the wizard or whether you're putting it through editing the code and it's a question of like I mean that is a different modality so maybe it would be easier to do it in the code afterwards than doing it with the wizard initially. Um, I don't know what that, I don't like, that looks like if we want to really know what our users, you know, uh, um, would take out of that, I think we'd have to do A, B testing or something. But um, yeah, if, if, if we think it's uh, easier to take care of that work later on in the code, then that's where it goes, you know. I don't know if, if we were talking about the same thing there at the end, but it's okay. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure if what, yeah, for that conclusion is reflecting back something that you thought we had said. I'm not sure, but it's okay. Um, but I think for now, Bryce, I, 
I feel okay about having those be checkboxes internally. Yep. Um, but I do, but does make me think, as I said, like we definitely should not make you handle changing the attachment block manually. So let's open an issue for that now um, to handle yes, no checkboxes automatically. Mm -hmm. um, and that reminds me, which your form doesn't have any of, but I don't think we have an open issue for that either, is we need a convention for tables where there's multiple rows that have the same fields. I think it does have not a, quite a kind of a table. Um, oh yeah, uh, well, yeah, it kind of is actually, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just like there's one of the rows that you don't have to modify. The one, the type of motion row is specified mm -hmm. in for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that one makes it probably pretty different. I mean, one of our conventions for lists of items like children is to say, which I think is, I put something through and neither child nor children triggered the, anyway, so like children or users or, you know, defendants is to have the number one directly after the prefix, which tells Something you how many it, there are right like or, or tells Something you like this is, yeah exactly there we go yeah yeah i think what we need to do though is like have it say some other keyword as part of the name because otherwise you don't know how they're related to each other when you're reading across a row or if they're related to each other you know for child and children we know because we know it's a person and we have particular attributes we look for in advance related to the children okay but we don't for an arbitrary row. Cause like, so let's look at the convention here. So if it was like motion for judgment served zero date, wouldn't that be the convention? I guess it could be, but maybe the word, I was thinking the word row in the name maybe, but. So you, you could feel free to, I know there was a problem with this before. I, again, I apologize for my memory that like the details sometimes escape me. Um, there was a point at which we were weighing the advantages and disadvantages of arbitrary variables. And I think we came to a point where we were like, don't know if arbitrary variables are worth it for the complexity they add. I think they just don't work. They don't? No, because of the way that DACA symbol, I mean, like, obviously there's a way we could. And not arbitrary, work. arbitrary attributes. Yeah, it doesn't does not work with the way that objects work and are triggered in doc assemble without making mm. like again changes to our design. Um, okay. So like it, anyway. You yeah, have to like explicitly set anyway. an attribute. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, no worries. I mean, that could potentially relate to it, but it wouldn't really be solving the same problem because you have to know that that's an object that you want to create to start with and that it's a row in a table or a row in a list, rather item in a list. That's all mm -hmm. one item. That's the first level to get to before you say arbitrary attributes. And could, then that could, could we say um, table at the beginning of it? And then we know to make the an object for that variable? Yeah, starting it with table would work as well. Or again, if we- With table if, and row. And uh, I mean, at row, I think we could determine by the number that comes after. Like I'm thinking, go back up to judge, yeah. to the judge, judge. So it says judge zero, judge one, judge two. If it said table judge zero, zero is the row. So we might already have that, that information. Um, it but might be that column is a bit more difficult to establish. What? But look where we're trying to parse it from though, right? Um, so this is a really natural place to put it. Um, and before the roll, that does read really nicely, but then the number, the digit can be anywhere in the middle of the variable name. So if we always said it ends with underscore row one or row zero, row, you know, that. Okay, sure. 
just one point, but. Yeah. Um, I had a thought, but it has left my mind. It's okay. That sounds good. Oh, I was saying we can also, depending on what we decide, decide about naming conventions, we can decide where this complexity goes, whether it goes in naming conventions or whether it goes in some interaction in the wizard. I think no matter what we do on a convention, but it could be like loose or tight, right? Because if you then go and even if we, we want to enforce that every row is named the same way, for example, right? In a way that can be parsed out correctly because they're going to be op turned into objects that are part of a list. That's true. So we would need to, I think in some way that would need to involve a naming convention. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I'm, it's, the, it's the table and row part that I'm thinking maybe could be abstracted. I think you're right that like the variable names used would have to stay consistent. Otherwise, you're not gonna, um, you're not going to be able to track that it's the same, that they're objects or a list of objects or whatever. Um, but it's the table and row part of the naming convention that I was thinking could be, um, if we wanted moved off to, you know, pushed off to the wizard part of the complexity. I'm not dictating one or the other. I'm just putting it out there. I rest my kiss. Yeah, no, I, I think it's worth thinking about. I mean, I'm just not, because we need a convention. I'm not sure if making people then say, yep, this met the convention and that's what I intended to do. Okay. Whether that saves them time. But it's something to, we might not get people to use the tables no matter what we do. So that's something to keep in mind too. But, so, but just for people who do want to and want to, and can do it the right way, it's helpful to have the choice there. Sure. We're, hmm. I mean, there's other use, UI issues to think about there too, right? Like if we, we're starting to approach a lot more of the features of like a graphical platform that they are intentionally making graphical from the beginning. And in that situation, you might like draw a box around those exactly. fields. Exactly, it's my dream. That's exactly it. It's really nice to hear someone else say it. So that it's not- Yeah, I know, of course it would be, that would be easy for people to use, but- Yes. We have to figure out what scope we're really ready to exactly. make. And yeah, it's blue and when, sky. When we are building a different tool then, that might already exist, for example, in the form of document or community lawyer. Yeah. Or contributing to documents editor, which I think is not a bad idea if like that is something they're open to. If if and when this effort does happen, I think contributing to, you know, what documents already what documents already creating is not a bad idea. And then you have a team of people who have already experienced the pain points of doing this kind of thing, working with you. That sounds great. Is Documents Editor open source? No, okay. Oh, it's not open source. Ah, okay. Well, so I've done other I UI, I haven't philosophical thinking that but I think the action item is like yeah we did make sense but we probably can't do anything about it right now did you have yeah you have other questions that we could answer though related yeah to yeah I so said uh they're they're like much smaller than this compared to likely um one of them is uh are we are for things like user and then user underscore underscore like two um are they are they are they one indexed or are they zero indexed? And then does it make sense to also do like zero like which, whichever one they are do like zero underscore underscore one or zero um, for the first one? I think that as long as you go from either zero or one. So first of all, underscore underscore anything doesn't matter because all that tells us is all that does is make a unique a field unique 
everything after the everything including the underscore underscore all that is chopped off we know it's the same variable oh, oh. okay so 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 the underscore underscore is just mostly for like some whatever can like handling the pdf stuff and then also whatever you find you most useful right i uh, see yeah, okay exactly so um it's just that explaining all that that's right yeah. when people are learning <laughs> it that's not a great time to explain all that um oh, yeah. As far as, you know, judge zero, judge one, judge two, I believe that I've made it so you can either start with zero or one, and it doesn't matter because so many people were starting with different stuff that I just, you know. Perfect. <laughs> I figured if it was possible, then I might as well do it. I should double check that code and make sure. I, I know you can start with either. Yeah, I think I, I, think I did it, that you can start with either one or zero. Nice. Okay. I think that was the only one that I like, or that's the only like list of things that I have. But yeah, no, that is, that is much, that is honestly really nice to just be simultaneously both. Um, yeah. Well, we were ha we just had a mix of coders and non-coders and it's, it's always, I mean, when you move between languages anyway, whether it's yeah. zero indexed or one indexed is... True. Always a question. All those Mathematica coders out there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, Julia does the one index thing too, I think. Um, oh, does it? Okay. Yeah, they're, they, they borrow pretty heavily from like MATLAB though, so. Um, oh, okay, the, the last thing I, like last question I actually had, I know uh, I asked Quentin earlier this morning about the like why, why particular font sizes, um, which makes sense, but I realized I had it asked why, um, do we care about specific, specific font types? Um, like, I believe both, I think actually like Quentin said this, and I think also in like the documents I had going through, it was suggesting like Arial, um, but I believe all of the like default fonts for this field are Helvetica. Um, I thought it was Helvetica. I thought that's what we made the default font. But- so, I did but, not double check before I said okay. that comment, Bryce. I could be wrong. Okay, oh, um, okay. but mostly whatever it is, like even if it is, like if it's mostly I was wondering if we, if we really do care about the font, type as much or is it better to like be consistent with the rest of the form? Um, so I think this arose out of people like wanting to improve the form and so choosing a field to have some font type and then forgetting to update the other fields. So it was meant for like consistency within the same form. And I so see. instead okay. of having that discussion, we just said make it Helvetica, right? Just make okay. sure everything is Helvetica and then people you know. And did you know, Bryce, you can highlight all of the fields and change them at once? I honestly did not, and that would have been amazing to know. <laughs> sorry one, one, you can change all their heights <laughs> at once. Like if you look at the properties, you can change their heights and widths at the same time. But I did find that. That was actually, that was a, I did do stuff like that of like being able to select multiple and then. I thought it looked like it. I was like, did you spend hours on it or did you just align it, you know? No, I just aligned them. Um, I did great. have to spend a decent amount of time because I couldn't like align. The yes, no's are like really hard to see behind. And so I would end up like even, cause even these boxes sort of like go over the mm. circle that's behind them. And so I had mm. to, it wasn't super hard though. Cause I would just like bring it, bring it through the wizard that like auto fills in everything. And then just be like, well, this X is like in the top right corner of this circle, I just like move it over a bit. Um, and so that actually wasn't too bad. And the wizard would, was very useful for that. Um, so, but yeah, that was those, those were like the only other things. I guess, yeah, changing all the properties at once would have been good to know because I had been trying like individually going through each. I didn't know you could do the properties for all at the same time. I thought that was somewhere in the videos or documentation, but maybe we need, it would be useful. To I know where any of that stuff is linked to yeah, probably. We have a lot of- Yeah, no, that's the fair. Yeah. That's the other thing is like, there was, there was a lot of documentation and I feel like by the, after I had like much. already said, like, I'm ready for review. I had like came across like a few other pages that I was like, mm. probably should have read through some of these too. Um, but there was just a lot. Um, there is. Like, some of it was from the Trello card and it was all, it was all good, but it was just like, there was a lot. And I didn't know, I didn't know to notice where some of them were until it was too late. Um, it, but, it might be good to have like, I don't know, like the thing I do with some of my documents is like, these are the very basics. Here are more advanced things that might help you, et cetera. I wanted, I wanted yeah. to say about changing properties all at once. There are times when I've selected a bunch, changed their properties, and then found that if I select them again, the properties have reverted. This um, was actually, this was a thing that I believe happened as well because Gwen was like some of, some of my like 
fonts had all changed and I thought I had gone through and changed them all to 10, but then I looked back and I'm like, they're all auto. And I just threw that to me, not using, knowing how to use Adobe, but maybe that's more common so, thing than I thought. So one thing is to press enter to make sure you press enter after you've selected something that usually does better setting it in place. There mm -hmm. are other times when I think like you've selected a group and it's just like, oh, I just changed one of them. And so if you select the group again, or if you select a different one, then it won't have it. And so sometimes I've had to like grow, go through a number of times for like the number of fields that exist. And it's ended like with the um, multi-line thing, I've experienced that a bit where like, I've just had to, you know, I select all and then I keep hitting properties over and over again until or either that or I go through individually. And, but sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and it's worth a shot. I wish there was an easy way to like, yeah, it doesn't matter, but. It's, that was, those are all like my sort of just general PDF questions. Um, was good. good questions. Thanks. I think sometimes also, if you like wait a second after you change mm. an item in the group and or click somewhere else in the dialogue, if, if you find something consistent, I felt like one of our meetings a month or so ago, we were doing that in real time and, and that's what the behavior was that people saw. I, oh great we're trying it yeah i'll try next time yeah it's right, one so of you the most annoying things, like things. About the documentation you're like oh we should so i one of my thoughts was we could update all of the documentation and link it centrally on the website but actually the checklist seemed to have worked so well that yeah. i think the most important place to do is to link the right thing in context in the checklist yeah and, and or at the top of the list in Trello, mm -hmm. the because then that can be updated. The top of the column? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah, top of the, the well, they, they're called lists in Trello, but they're oh, okay. visually they're columns. So if you have a card there at the top that's sticky, that has information that's not meant to be moved from another to another list, but just is there with information, a couple of the columns have that because it's like, something got updated after the checklists were already added to most of the cards. Yeah. So that was the only other place, other way to, to put that on all of the cards was to edit it and put it there. Change is pain. That'd yes. be the with documentation. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I like these process questions. Second. Like this is exactly like the user feedback I think ow, we've been hoping for for a while. Um, I mean, we get feedback on various things, right? But I don't think this particular one has come up for a while. And I, I, I enjoy revisiting. That's good. Yeah, no, I was going to say that the trial, the trial checklist was like an absolute godsend and it made it really easy until the point when I was like, one like uh, the entire like changing through the pdf was like one checkbox and like the whole document and i was like cool i'm gonna go through this and i did and i was like but wait there seems to be a lot here that's like missing or just like this was just a large step uh, <laughs> yeah but everything else about the checklist was great <laughs> well we could yeah if you have thoughts of how to make more checklist items in between we should we should take those yeah. checklists of the next if time. you have yeah if you took I, if you didn't take notes, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I'm so excited. That's right, that's a good point. I, I might throw some ideas out in some more, probably in a Slack channel later today of just like, hey, anyone mind changing the template to split up these into several different things or whatever? Yeah, that would be great. If May, if May were here, I wanted to say, if May were here, she would be so thrilled right now. <laughs> like to hear all these things. Oh, I miss her. Um, all right. Well, Bryce, it sounds like we've worked our way through through your checklist. I'm wondering, Audrey or Matt, if you had some topics that you wanted to, to use our next 15 minutes or so for. Uh, this is Matt. I did not have any burning questions at today, or at least right now. Mm, I hear that. That's the same with me. I think... Um, I've just, Matt and I have just worked on two interviews. Um, 
And then uh, in January, I think we'll be starting with PDFs. Is that right, Matt? So just trying to absorb this ahead of time. Okay. Well, we're, yeah, we're doing a lot of work. I mean, I think I'm pretty excited with the stuff we've been doing in our coding meetings. It's very, it's not exciting to an outsider probably, but it'll let us free up a lot of resources to make it easier for folks like you in Illinois and New Hampshire to adopt our assembly line and make it work for your stuff without having to fight the things that we made that were tied to Massachusetts. So you can look forward to that by January, I hope. Yeah, great. Yeah, look, I am anticipating. Do you know, are you planning on having any kind of formal launch or training for it? Um, so I think that probably the other person who I think would be ready to start doing something like that is um, Amanda Brown. Do you know Amanda? Her thing is Lanyap Law now in Louisiana. I, I don't I think, think I, no, not too well. Okay. The name sounds familiar. I'm sure you've, you've met her at ITC before. Um, but so it feels like maybe we should just coordinate a meeting with the with the three and, and try to get everyone up to speed at the same time. I think that sounds right. Maybe we can do another open call and say, hey, we're going to orient people and here's your chance to follow along in real time. Be part of our first cohort of expansions. Oh, that sounds great. But January is like a, is a good timeline for you in general, though, Matt? Um, yes, I think that will work well. Um, as Audrey said, we're going to start up on some new interviews. Um, and you know, we did these the first few just uh, without using the wizard or any formal processes, but I would like to do things like and also use the um, MA virtual courts um, toolboxes, things like that, whatever we're calling it. So if we can yeah, use all those integrated tools at the same time, it might make sense to start. Uh, but January is a good time. All right. Yeah, I'm really excited because we're going to be able to integrate the stuff with documents being in one object and having addenda. Those are going to be like really nice things. Now we add in the saving and loading variables, they'll be like, we're going to blow LHI out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> But those are all things that have been kind of drawbacks of DocAssemble that I think we've found good solutions to so far. Nice. Um, I sounds like we've kind of hit the end, but I don't know if there are other topics people had they wanted to talk about that aren't about problems. I'm curious, I don't know, Audrey or Matt, if you want to share some of the things you've been working on or would rather just say, okay, we finished early, that's okay. I am okay with finishing early because I have a lot of work I need to finish before the end of the year. Yeah. Um, but at some point, yeah, I, I am happy to uh, share both of our, at least the Illinois the interviews and programs as they stand and get feed, get additional feedback on them, that would be great. Great. All right. Well, I'm still planning to be around next week. I think we're still normal schedule, right, David? You're muted. Yeah, until the 23rd or whatever. Okay. What is our official time off, 23rd through the 1st? I'm gonna. I was actually gonna ask Sarah after her talk. Okay. Unfortunately, it's it's a little different between your positions and, and this goes back to the meeting not always being relevant. <laughs> I'll go and ask what what is the appropriate ones for our position. Okay. All right. So you'll ask. So I don't have to ask. It'll be yeah. your answer will apply to to Bryce and I. Yes, I'm, I was actually explicitly gonna ask for the two of you. I know mine, but I don't know yours. All right. Sounds good. Do you want me to hang out until? Too. I mean, it's only 10 minutes. It wouldn't be a whatever. I think you might see Caroline. I think we can safely say none of David's students are coming. Yeah. I think I'm going to, I'm going to stop the recording.